Honestly, this preservation method is one of my favorites because you can do it with nearly anything. On top of that, the actual recipes you can get out of it isn't just using pickled or tomato-based recipes. So you're probably at that time in your garden where you have to start thinking about preserving. And you're probably doing some Google searches and finding out that pretty much every preservation method is either cold storage and or canning. And depending on how much money you wanna shelf out, mostly pickling is the option for many of us because water bath canning is the cheapest uh, of the two that you can do. And unfortunately, because of that, we start feeling limited in how we can preserve our food. Because let's face it, times are tough. There's not a ton of cash sitting around. So investing in a pressure canner for many of us is out of the budget. Now, I've used this method for years and you can actually get really creative with this and make some almost ready to go meals, which is kind of cool. And is the same as pressure canning in the sense that you just need to warm it up. So if you lack cold storage for things like garlic, onions, and cabbage, or if you simply just don't have the ability to pressure can things like zucchinis and beets and turnips, or if you don't want to pickle every single pepper you have and make endless amounts of tomato-based uh, recipes, then this most definitely is the video for you. If you're enjoying today's video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and share with a friend. It helps the channel enormously. And I'll thank you guys every time you do it. And now what we're gonna do is actually freezing. <laughs> the freezing method is the same rules regardless of what you're going to freeze. And ultimately what you do with the food prior to freezing is gonna determine how much meal prep you need to do at the time in which you decide to cook. So step one when freezing anything is to simply wash off that fruit and vegetable. If you are trying to accumulate veggies before you freeze, so you get like a bulk haul before you freeze, I highly encourage you not to wash the vegetable. One that comes to mind in particular is tomatoes for me. So tomatoes is one where they kind of just trickle in slowly. You can generally leave them on the counter for about two weeks before they start really truly going bad. And therefore uh, you can collect them over time. Once you wash your produce, it actually invites kind of a decay, I guess you could say, into that fruit or vegetable. So leaving everything kind of sit in situ, either in the fridge or just on the counter, I do just the counter, please do without washing. So step two is going to be your prep. Now, you don't have to do this step. This is completely up to you. So if you want to prep your food and have it so that it's easier to deal with when it comes to cooking, you could consider shredding your cabbage, shredding your zucchini, rather than just slicing it in holes to fit in the bag. For cabbage, you'd wanna slice it into quarters, uh, not just the whole don't freeze the whole head type thing. For celery, you probably don't want sticks of celery. You probably would want to chop those up into sizes that you would use in stuffing or whatever the case is. So doing some prep work, knowing what recipes you're likely going to be doing. So you know you're gonna make a lot of zucchini muffins, then I would shred. If you know you're gonna do cabbage rolls, you may wanna separate the leaves out you know, that kind of thing. If you know you don't like onions sliced and you like them diced, then you may wanna dice them. See where I'm going? So do some food prep. Once your food prep is completed, shredded, chopped, divided, whatever the case is. So for tomatoes, I don't do any prep with them. I don't core them, nothing. I just blanch these for one minute. If it's shredded zucchini, you're going to blanch for one minute. Shredded for cabbage, shredded cabbage, blanch for one minute. The rule is one minute blanch, that's it. We don't want to make it mushy. And this is how you end up with freezer food that doesn't really have any texture to it is when you over blanch. So just a quick dip in. I usually just dip, set timer on my phone, pull out, I'm standing over the oven the entire time. And then you're going to immediately move it into ice cold water. That ice cold water bath, you can let it sit in there until you're done blanching that entire batch that you're processing, and then you can go into actually preparing them to be frozen. So best way to do this is to get a cookie sheet or several cookie sheets or cardboard, whatever, just some sort of flat surface and put all of your shredded stuff or your d divisions, your preps onto said flat surface and just make sure everything's separated out in a way that's 
easy to divide. Leave it in there uh, for anywhere from two hours to overnight. I just do overnight. And then after that, you can divide it up into baggies. And I just use classic freezer bags. If you have a vacuum sealer, obviously you can use that. And one key when doing that is I highly encourage you to make your life easier for the winter. So example here, if I know I want to can salsa in the future, I'm going to take my tomatoes, I may, you know, stick a pepper, some jalapenos into the mix, maybe some cloves of garlic into the mix, some onion into the mix. And now I have a bag of salsa that I can prepare either fresh all at once to serve immediately and or to can in the future. If I know I want to make pasta sauce, again, you can take herbs uh, and freeze them alongside your tomatoes, put some diced onions in there, etc., and so forth. If you know you want to uh, use zucchini in some sort of dessert, for example, you want to pair it with pineapple or apple, whatever the case is, uh, freeze all that together. Same with beets, you name it. So can I see what I'm going with? This will make your life easier uh, in the future when you go to can. Or if you like, you can divide everything up separate. So tomatoes in one bag, um, garlic in another, etc., and so forth. There's no problems there. I just find it's easier just to have like a section of salsa, a section of pasta, a section of my stuffing materials. So carrots and celery, whatever the case is. And I just grab the bag of stuffing stuff <laughs> and then I can make my stuffing or whatever the case is. All I need to do is either microwave it, saute it up, or in some cases just let it dethaw or defrost because if you freeze cabbage, you could use it for coleslaw. You just have to dethaw it properly. But I hope this helped you guys out. If you're overwhelmed and it's way too hot to can yet, trust me, I'm in the same boat here where I am. I don't feel like canning when it's 28 degrees outside. So I'm personally freezing. I think I'm on my fifth or sixth Six, a bag of tomato, bread bag of tomatoes. Ay, ay, ay. It'll give you a little bit of relief until you're back into the homesteading vibe after a crazy season of smoke and heat and bugs, you name it. So I want to thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and I will talk to you guys next time.